dear students in this video we'll be discussing on how to work the VHDL code of the master slave JK flip flop or just we can call it as a JK flip flop here we are demonstrating with a JK flip flop with an additional input preset and clear or the additional inputs the clock input J and K input so all these are the inputs Q is the in out Q bar is out. These are the ports and this is the code given. You can just observe this is in the green color. It's a comment. So if you fail you can write it. Otherwise you can exclude the statement. When preset and clear both are 0, 0 it is undetermined. And all the other conditions you have to write. So if preset 0 and clear 1 what will be your Q? Preset 1 clear 0 what will be your Q? So here it is set, here it is reset. When both are 1, 1, only at the raising edge of the clock and sorry, then based on the J and K input, your Q will be. This is very important. That's the reason I just told I, we can claim this as a JK flip-flop. Only at the raising edge, what will be the change in the Q? So whatever the action of the master, the slave will be following. So we are going to get the same output. We can claim this program is the master slave JK flip flop as well. So when J and K values are 0 and 1, it is reset. So 0 will be assigned to Q. So 1, 0 it is set. 1, 1 it is toggle condition. That's why we write Q is equal to not Q. And we'll end this process. Out of this process, we are assigning Q bar value. So very important thing which you need to focus here is whether you are using else if or ELS IF. Suppose if I write an else if separate, we need to write that many end ifs here. If I write else if, one end if is fine for each block. So you, you need to remember this and the rising edge of the clock. That's it. So once you complete uh, editing this program, simulate this. Since no errors, if any errors, you can just look into this window, find out that error and try to correct it. Since there is no error, just go to the behavioral simulation, double click on the simulate behavioral model. And we are interested only in this wave default part, maximize this and restart the content. So we need to force the value for each of these ports, only the inputs, not for Q, Q bar. So we have to look into the truth table and then we can able to work with these inputs. So here is the truth table of the JK flip flop. The preset and clear or the asynchronous signals which will never depend on the clock as and when we provide this we are going to get our output as set or reset. Since we are forcing our flip flop to be set and reset together this condition is not determined. So we will not be working with this condition. If you feel you can work but, and we have also not written anything respect to this 0 0 conditions. So preset 0 and clear 1 it is set. So you force the value for the preset 0. Then clear 1. So without setting any value for clock J and K, you can just run. It has to set the flip-flop as per the truth table. Yes, it is working fine. Then work with the next condition. Preset 1, clear 0, it has to reset. So preset, you make it 1, sorry. Preset, you make it 1. Clear, you make it 0. Now run it. So it is reset. Next, 
this condition preset and clear both we are making inactive and without or irrespective of any of the clock if j and k value is 0 0 sorry 0 1 this state is unchanged or it stays with the same state why because we have not applied any clock here otherwise we can write this as zero when there is no clock instead of writing as don't care don't care the meaning is either it can be zero or it can be one okay you can just do this changes here we'll just make preset and clear both are one one yeah clear is already okay preset is one clear also we make it one then clock i'll just apply it zero clock will apply zero j and k value as per the truth table we can follow here zero and one so j value i'll make it zero yeah k it's one j it is zero you can just provide any value for the j and k without the clock whatever we provide that effect will not be getting at all so it just stays with the previous state you can just check out here j value is 0 k value is 1 so what we expect is reset since you get your q 0 it's not reset here it just stay with the same state that's the reason i told you can just check change your j value to 1 k value to 1 the output expected here is toggle or just make your j1 k0 output expected is set but still you will be getting the same result okay next we just work with the next condition by applying the clock the basically the meaning of this clock is only when you get this raising edge of the clock only then the changes will be so when we want to apply the clock so we have an one more option of just right click on this clock instead of forcing the value 0 and 1 manually we can also use this clock so when i just make use of this raising edge of the clock click on ok i can generate the clock pulse now we'll just make the clock falling edge sorry and we'll just look into the changes in the clock so the clock whatever we generate will start from the falling edge you can observe the green color here till it was been shown since the clock which i asked to generate as a falling edge it started from the 0 to 1 so it will be having falling edge first then the sorry falling edge first then the raising edge you can just observe here so just run with this what is the use of this way of generating the clock rising edge or falling edge because whatever the input because the program what we have written is will change only in the raising edge of the clock whatever the inputs across before the raising edge of the clock means when the clock was zero what was the j and k input based on that we are going to get our output suppose j0 k1 in the in this particular time instance so i'll be getting with this positive edge so i'll be getting set when j1 k0 it is set j0 k1 it will be reset so that's the only intention of applying this clock whether it is raising edge or falling edge suppose if i take this raising edge whatever because at this particular instance of time the clock is changing from 0 to 1 the j and k was unknown before this so i'll be getting the output as unknown so this red color i'll be getting in order to avoid that so just go with the clock with a falling edge i just restart everything we'll just work with along with the oh, sorry compare with the previous true table what we have looked in and we'll start working now so yeah, it has been worked with 0, 1 condition of the preset, 1, 0 condition of preset and clear it's been done. 1, 1 what will happen if there is no clock and whatever the value of j and k. Now we'll start working with these conditions. So when we'll make preset and clear 1, 1 and we'll apply the clock. So because we'll be focusing on the raising edge, 
that's the reason i'll go for the clock and make it start from the falling edge so i can get the output with the same time instance and i'll make my j and k 0 0 we'll look into that what will be the output we'll quickly work with the true table as per this so make our preset 0 clear one that is set make preset high clear 0 reset so now we'll just make our preset and clear both are inactive so make both preset and clear high apply the clock i'll just apply with the following edge then apply j and k input j0 k0 so it should be previous state so just run so previous state now j0 k1 reset j0 k1 it should be reset 0 0 and the clock is 0 year j0 k1 q should be reset since already it was there 0 so it's continued with the same you couldn't notice any difference here yeah? just make your j1 and k0 you can find the difference that is set at this raising edge of the clock it's been changed then you make j and k both one one and work with the toggle condition so now at this raising edge my output of q was one before now it is zero then if i apply the uh, if i run again so at this raising edge now q has been changed to zero to one so this condition will keep repeating. This is how we can able to work with the master slave JK flip. Uh, with this, I'll wind up the video. Thank you.